Welcome back to Piney Grove, folks. I'm Brad. I'm Deb. And we are back on this fence project. This is day number eight, I believe. Um, you lose track after a while. So today it's real warm. It's already 70 degrees at 10 o'clock in the morning in Northwest Florida. But uh, we've got a mission today. We've got 333 feet of fence that is up and somewhat stapled. And we got 330 feet more laid out as uh, ended in the last video, which I guess was part seven. And uh, we've got to add 50 feet. So we've got to roll a wire out already, have a, a stash of wire uh, in the back of the back of the property. So we have a roll of wire out. We'll have to pull out 50 feet of wire off of that and attach it. And then it should be stretching and stapling. We got about five hours to work today and we should be able to knock this out. I don't know if you've noticed in the background, the neighbor's dogs, Bella and Lily, we love them dearly, but uh, we want them to be invited guests, not come over <laughs> at their will. First thing we have to do though, is back on the first corner and we'll get some close up video of it because I've been thinking about it for a week now. What happened was my, my H brace was not a corner and because it was an inline H brace, the end post twisted when we stretched. So we've got to twist that back. So I might have to remove some staples and I bought some hurricane strapping for the post. So that's the first thing we got to do uh, is get that fixed. So we get some uh, video of that. But otherwise, that's what we got going on today. You guys stay tuned and watch. You got anything, Deb? <laughs> no, keep your fingers crossed for us that we finish. <laughs> <laughs> we both just want to be done with this. We want to cross this project off. Keep in mind, once this fence is strung, uh, this wire is strung, we still got to come back and do T-posts. But once we get it up on these wooden posts, then it is a solid fence that our neighbors can return their horses to this pasture which they've been out of for a while. So today will be a huge milestone if we can get this stretched and stapled. All right, here we go. Watch us work. All right, so the first thing we got to do is I'm going to undo all these staples I put here so I get a little more slack in the fence and undo it at the next post as well. Then I'm going to hook a chain to that corner post and try and twist it. I don't know if it'll work, but it's all I can think of at the moment. If you don't have a set of these pliers, these are DeWalt, but they come in many different makes. Um, they're, they're perfect for fencing. They are fencing pliers, but you use that to help pull the staple out and you also grab the staple with that. These staples are in pretty deep because I wanted them to, to hold pretty good, but you can still pull them out. Really bothers me to have to do something over when I felt like we had put in a very sturdy H brace, but got to be fixed or else this fence will never stay tight and I my fear is that that end pole that end pole will eventually just come and spin all the way around although it probably won't but it just looks really bad it's not in line anymore I think we can fix all that down, down. here's the end of the H brace you can see how much it's twisted Bradford hooked a chain to it Put the chain to his tractor and a come along. And then he's hooking down there to a tree. And this is gonna be interesting. There's our neighbor's horse. Isn't she pretty? You've attracted the attention of the uh, neighbors. Oh, hello. <laughs> Either that I'm standing in his restroom. <laughs> Maybe both. Post, chain, Bradford, come along, put the chain on the tree, and we'll see how this is going to work. There we go. He's hoping it turns the post. We'll see what happens. moving the post. I don't know if it's turning it or just moving it. It's creaking and crunching. The post. Oh, geez. Keep creaking. Creak. I don't know. It's creaking, crunching, and popping. You know, we say if it doesn't work, first you don't succeed, second you don't succeed, third you don't succeed, hit it with a hammer. Buck it up against the H brace. No idea the method of his madness. He knows, so I guess that's all that matters. Different angle, that's what's happening here.
disassemble, reassemble, different angle. Yeah, it didn't, uh, it didn't twist the post like I wanted. So I got the tractor up against the H brace and I'm gonna try and pull to this pine tree back here and hopefully that'll twist the post. Bucket against H brace, chain on post of H brace. Come along, chain, pine tree. All right, so that worked a little better. What we did was we changed the angle of the come along. So we're forcing um, a twist on the post and we got it twisted. I got to let the tension off because I got to get the hurricane strap started and then put the tractor up again. So I wasn't sure if this would work. I didn't want to waste my hurricane strap, but I'll get that started. And then once, once we get it all the way rotated the way we want it, we'll nail that in. It shouldn't be able to rotate back. So these are called hurricane straps and you use these on the header of your house to keep your to keep your um, frame from lifting up so I bought two of these I'm gonna use one to go to the post and I think one to fasten to the other side of this H brace just like I'm doing here create like a U this will just be more like a like an L to hold what we have Using galvanized nails, they should grip this wood real good. I'm going to put one in every hole. All right, so we'll twist it back. We'll get a good twist on it. We'll bring this around. We'll fasten this to the post. And then we'll probably do another brace on top of it or just above it. Let's see how that goes. Okay, the hurricane strap is on the H of the H brace attached. The chain's attached to the H to the post and a pine tree. Let's see what happens. Post is back in line, and now Bradford is attaching the rest of the hurricane strap to keep it from twisting back. That's the hope and the thought process, at least. Oh, Bella, she's a loyal companion. She just chills. She'll stay as long as... Her parents don't come get her. As long as we don't run her off, she'll stay and keep us company. Okay, so the tractor bucket I now see stabilized the horizontal post and the hurricane strap. Bradford was able to stretch that hurricane strap all around the post and then he was able to tack it in and he's motioning for me to do something. Hold on. Because we really, really don't want this to twist again. He's got his second hurricane strap ready to go. All right, he's gonna release the tension from the um, come along. Let's see what happens. Nope, it's not rotating. That's good. One hurricane strap done, it's not rotating. I'll move the tractor bucket and then he'll um, attach that second strap and we should be good to go. Get back to fencing. Two hurricane straps, post pulled and twisted back in place. Bradford's reattaching the staples that he had to pull out on that post. So, an hour and 20 minutes or so, and we're going to be back in business. But it looks good. 
It won't drive Brad crazy every time it looks at it. And it's done. Alrighty, here we are. Exactly where we left off last time. Except, well, we have the extra roll of fencing now there. And then we have this 330 feet rolled out that we'll have to tack and pull. But hopefully, it's a quick process. Posts are in, H brace is in. Just a matter of rolling, tightening, and tacking. We'll see. That dog loves tractors. She makes me nervous, but she loves tractors. We're gonna um, start pulling from this middle H brace. Brad's putting together the fence puller. As we talked about last time, not a complicated gadget, but helpful, does the job. This girl sees a tractor getting ready to go and she comes running. I think that she gets to ride on the tractor as much as she likes it. It's crazy. Okay, so once again, we use the tractor as an anchor. So when we stretch the fence, we have an anchor point. So the fence stretcher is secured on the fence. The come along is attached to the fence stretcher. We'll attach that to the tractor and then Brad will begin wrenching here's what we got we lean the fence up against the, the post so that we have more of an even stretch we hooked our handy dandy um super cheap tractor supply fence stretcher got our chain and a v so that it pulls evenly top and bottom hooked it up to a come along the tractor's in low gear and park and um and the brake is set and now we're going to hook the come along to the tractor should be an easy stretch. You can see the, uh, the waves in the fence have already straightened out a lot just from a little bit of pulling. When you look down the fence line, it looks good. When you look down the fence line, it looks tight. Ah, the chain isn't uh, perfectly even on both the top and the bottom bracket, so it's not pulling level. Looks good, so much better than what was here before, an old rotted barbed wire fence that was tight enough. I think so. Ready to start stapling? I am. By tightening up this section, it actually pulled a little bit tighter. The section we had already done, that had loosened up from the post moving a little, so it's better. If you ever come across a fence that's like fiddle string tight, that's this type of wire, you go up and shake that man's hand because this is hard. It's really hard to get it as, you know, you think you stretch the heck out of it and you get it tight and that's the way it'll stay, but it's really, really hard to have a super tight, long fence. A short fence with corner post and corner braces is a little bit easier, but these long stretches, it's really hard to get it tight because number one, you stretch it, but then the wire has a whole bunch of little bends and kinks in it that will just have to um, be pulled out, you know, through time and tension, not just quick tensioning. So I'd like it tighter, but I mean, we, we only have so much time here. We can't keep restretching this fence. So the fence is tight from that corner and more so from that H brace all the way to the tractor. So now it's time to staple. So it stays before we finish off this uh, second 330 foot roll.
Still stapling. So Brad is stapling, and I look over here, and I see Bella digging, digging, digging under one of our debris piles. I don't know what she's found. She smells something in there. Oh my goodness. I guess that's just one of the joys of being a farm dog. So if you watched our previous video, you would have seen where we joined these two fence rolls of 330 feet right here. Looks really good and kept tight, pulled, stretched, and tacked all the way down to that H brace and it looks really good. We're gonna release the tension on what we just did, or actually Brad just did release the tension that stayed really tight. So. Can talk about your progress? All right, so we're, we're stretched tight from here back all the way to the corner that we first started working on. But yeah, stapled, we stapled real good on the H brace. One thing we wanted to show is right here when we stretched, you can see we stretched good here, but down here the stretcher slipped. The stretcher itself didn't slip, it just slipped along the wire. I guess I didn't have these bolts quite as tight as I had those other bolts. So going back to the beginning, we said we wanted perfectly square, vertical and horizontal squares um, to coincide with our, our plumb post. But they're gonna, the squares are gonna be a little off because it got stretched a little bit more at the top than at the bottom. So it's just something you gotta be mindful of. And when you're stretching and you have all that tension on the tractor and the come along, you just forget things. And that's one thing we forgot to check. So we're not gonna go back and redo it. Nope. All right, folks, you've been watching me work for a while. It's time to watch Deb work. So I bought this fence post puller. Haven't really used it. Uh, watch out for the ants there, babe. Haven't really used it, but uh, I've been using the tractor and the chain, but I got Deb and I got this fence post puller. So if you push down on that end, the post should come up, Deb. Let's see what happens. <laughs> no? Yeah, it's coming up. I Is it? On my weight on it. All right, go get another bite. It's actually made to go the other way, but you're fine. Just do it like that. It'll, it'll grip just like that. Lower. There you go. I, I haven't Literally seen it. have all my body weight on it. All right. Well, it's a cool concert. It's a good... Well, I was literally hanging on like a monkey with all my body weight. It's a cool concept. Oh, gotcha. There it goes. When you do it as per the directions, it works well. Okay, we're gonna give Mrs. Piney Grove another shot at this. I put the puller the proper way so it's not pulling up against the little spade bit that's in the bottom of the T-post. So she should be able to, and if that's too high for you, take your bite a little higher on the T-post, Deb. Is that too high for you? You wanna get? No, okay. All right. I think it moved. I don't think this is. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's moving though. <laughs> is it? All right, let, let me uh, get on there wait, with wait, it. No, let me try. Let me try again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think you scared it. What's I was trying to take? <sighs> oh, hold on. Let's get another bite. Okay. <sighs> See, he had to use all his body weight too, and his body weight's more than mine. Yeah, it, it was in there. These posts have been in the ground for decades, I'm sure. That's how it's supposed to go. Much quicker. So I mainly bought this tool not to pull out these posts because I have a tractor to do that. But if I overdrive the post and I want them perfectly level on the top, I figure like on our back fence line, I could use it to pull the post up a little if I needed to. There it goes. Get the right angle on it. Oh, 
All right, there is our commercial so yeah, because break. of the price of steel, T-posts have gone up significantly. We're trying to salvage as many as we can. We're gonna have to buy some, um, but that's why we're doing this. Now, back to this stretch. So we talked about the Brad's splicing job, his fence splicing job um, down the fence line and how well he did. So he'll do it again here. And it's amusing as we stated and, and annoying actually. In the last video that the fence roll ran out here and all we have to do is go to that corner right there. Whether you need 200 feet or 40 feet, the splicing is the same process. See how long this section takes because it seems like Pulling it and tacking it is pretty quick. This is our neighbor's back, half of his um, property and his pastures, and they're so pretty. This is a really pretty piece of property. It's easier to put the fence up on his side than our side, and he, of course, agreed to that. What I gotta do here is, when I put this H brace in a couple years ago, actually, this is a corner brace, two H braces. I hooked up my neighbor's barbed wire with some staples. I got to undo all of them, put them to the side. We'll put them back later because I got to go out there and I got to string a chain between a couple of those trees out there so I have a pulling point to pull the rest of the fence. I can't really get the tractor here. I don't really want to pull against this brace here because I want to get the wire tight all the way and wrap it around the corner. So that's what we're going to do. So I got to pull this out real quick and we got to splice in about 50 feet, I think we said last time. I got to take measure. We'll, we'll measure it. And we got to splice in a piece of wire and stretch and staple. So we're well on our way to finishing this project. It's going to get done today. <laughs> One way or another. Chain through the pipe. Pipe through the fence roll. This process beats kicking the fence roll down the fence line. One of the few things that have worked out. <laughs> Tell you, this little roller dealy was awesome. So that's where the splicing of the two pieces of fence will go. Go to that H bracket and it'll wrap around that post. Yeah, out of that whole fence roll, all we needed was that piece. Okay, so he pulled that stretch of fencing. Cut it off the roll, obviously. And now he is splicing. Splicing's a little time consuming. How fun is that, Brad? Not fun at all. Sure. <sighs> more out. One more to do. Just one more to bend. And I'll clean up those ends later. But for now, before it feels like it might rain, we want to get this last piece of fence up. Looks like a mighty fine splice there, sir. All righty. Here's the last. The last stretch. The last stretch. That's what I call it. That's what Brad calls it. That's what I would call it. So I'm on our side of the property line. Brad and the puppies are actually in the back. Neighbor's property line attaching the fence stretcher. He's got a chain around that stump and then around that pine tree. And he's gonna pull that angle. Tightening up the fence stretcher in preparation for the last pull. Okay, so since we couldn't get the tractor back here to pull this last stretch, Brad's creatively anchored to a stump and a tree, and he's going to stretch from here. There she goes. He readjusted a few of the staples and now he's pulling again. Getting tighter. Tightening again. Getting tighter. Oh, and it just popped off that staple right there. Okay. That was an eight inch pull, Brad said. That was a good one. Our little anchor stump is 
is making groaning noises. This is what happens to the staple, even though he stapled it way over here, he pulls it and it gets stuck against there. A matter of moving the staple and then pulling again. So Brad went down and readjusted every staple, every other post that we had put in. Now we're hoping this will be the final stretch. Every time he has to readjust the staples, that means it was a four inch pull. Let's watch the fence up close while it's being pulled. Hmm. It's crazy. He's pulling about 380 feet of fencing. His goal was to get the staple against here for the final pull, but I'm not sure if we're gonna be able to, oh, do that. Nope. Well, you saw we lost ground that last time. The uh, fence puller slid on the actual fence. So the fence stretcher slipped, so then you had to release the tension on the fence to fix the fence stretcher, which means we lost every bit of stretching that we've already done. I'm holding up the fence down here and Brad's readjusting everything. He was able to retighten the fence, the fence stretcher and now he's rehooking it all back up to the chains and the post and the oak tree. Hopefully this will, this will be the last time we have to play stretch this last piece because I think it's three or four times now. There's old loyal Bella still hanging out with us. Okay, here we go. Fingers crossed. Roots going to interfere with the way the bottom of the fence lays, so Paul Bunyan here is taking care of it. Problem solved. Big root there. A Brad and his axe to the rescue. Yep, another one. I mentioned earlier the reason we put the fence on our neighbor's side um, with his permission because it was easier because we have all the trees on our side. They've already taken down their trees many, many, many years ago. So we're dealing with past roots and our own roots. Okay, he says four, four clicks on the come along. Four clicks, and then we're gonna tack down and we'll be done. So that was two clicks. Three. three. Uh oh. We did three clicks, but that's okay. Now we staple. Last two staples. Last two staples in 750 feet of fence is done, stretched, stapled, and ready for T post. And he'll be able to put his horses in tonight if he wants. Down there. And that's the last staple. Yeah. And it ends down there, way down there. It's it's sturdy, it's secure. We'll put in um, T posters. The wood posts are staged every 30 feet and we'll fill in the 30 feet gap with T posts. But now it's secure, the dogs stay in, the horses will stay in. And it's a good time too, because it's, we're gonna be losing daylight soon. <laughs> gonna start. All right, Dad, what are we? We're finished. We're finished. We're Th finished. It's, we've lost the daylight almost. The sun is setting, but we are finished. Um, nothing goes as planned. We had to pull that last pull like four times because of the stretcher and because it was a long pull, but we got the fence really, really tight. I, I wouldn't say it's professionally tight, but it's definitely uh, how we do tight. So uh, we're quite proud of it, but it's all up. Uh, the neighbor can put his horses in whenever he wants to. So we stapled the corner completely. And when we let off the tension, it kept tension throughout the fence. So the fence should stay tight. And you saw the corner that we fixed first thing um, this morning with that H brace and that's held. So we went all the way to the end and it's tight all the way to the end. Mm -hmm. 740, 750 feet of fence, completely in, completely tight, completely stapled. Um, and all that's left now is the T post and putting those little clips around the T post, but that's a whole nother day at least. But day eight is over, the fence is up. We can text our neighbors, he can put his horses in. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're gonna call that a win. 
But thanks for coming along with us for today and hopefully the other seven days. So <laughs> thanks for coming along with us for eight days. Uh, we appreciate you joining us. Please click that like button. It really helps out our channel. Subscribe if you haven't already and share with your friends. You get anything, Deb, before we close out? I think the time sucker to us <laughs> today was fixing that first H brace, but it needed to be done. And Mr. Creative came up with a great way to do it. And now when he walks by it every time, he won't cringe. So that was, otherwise we would have been out of here, I think, on time. We would have been out of here probably a little bit early. But it's done. I'm happy it's done. I know you're happy it's done. And the neighbors and horses will be happy it's done. But that's all we have for today. We hope you enjoyed riding along with us, watching Brad work. <laughs> Until the next one, take care. Take care, y'all.